Prepare for fights. And make it nice. To cast the game on any stream. To show off our might as a casting team. To hype up the fights we know and love. To send Plat League to the stars above. Primus. Axe. We cast at the speed of light. Relax now or be ready for this night. Plat League. Starts tonight. And welcome everyone here. We're <laughs> here to week number one of our Plat Division. As of course we mentioned, I am Primus alongside my trusty partner in crime here, Axe Man 87. How are we doing tonight, my good friends? I'm doing just fine, Primus, and I miss casting with you. I'm looking forward to blasting off again, uh, as we do every episode concurrently. But we are uh, supposedly getting underway with the draft here in just a little bit. But uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I've ever used draft law. So I, I think this is the spectator client that I'm looking at. Um, oh, here we go. I think something yes. started. Yes, now it is starting. So... So we're, 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 we got lots of new parts going on here behind the scenes, but it's supposed to make our lives and your lives here at Zero Gravity Gaming far easier here. But the most important thing is, thing as always, is the two teams we are bringing you here, here tonight, which is going to be the company starting off this best of three series on the blue side, taking on a burger flip plat here and doing a little bit of research into these teams. There's not really ter anything terribly unexpected that we'll see out of the meta wise here from the two teams and not going to be terribly surprised if we see a lot of similar things to what we're seeing in the pro play in terms of priority wise. Yeah. And you know, me promise I'm never surprised anyway, so no difference for me there, but the bands are out already first phase here and uh fizz is banned away. That's a little interesting. I feel like Echo might be a little bit out of the uh, the comfort zone of the meta right now as well. But, hey, they're pretty strong champions, and they can be very annoying, especially at this ELO, uh, if you're one-tricking stuff like that. But we got first pick Kaiza, which I know has been popular, but I don't really like this first pick Primus, and here's why. Uh, jungle's just such an important role right now, and after this first ban phase, things like Olaf, um, things like Talia are on the table right now, and I just don't think Kaiza is that high in the pick priority, for me anyway. I can understand that. Um, the biggest thing right now is essentially first pick on blue side is basically whether or not you like Kaisa more or you like Jin more. Personally, I think Kaisa fits a lot of comps better than Jin as far as being easy to execute. And is this a jungle poppy or is this a poppy support? I don't know, and I'm happy for either. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if they know yet, but it's probably not going top. That would likely be the Camille here. So I think we're kind of left up with, with support here. I don't know if they're putting that in the jungle. But on the flip side here, Burger Flip leaving us with Set. That's interesting. We haven't seen that since, I'd say, back in Season 10. Uh, set hasn't been super strong, but he is definitely a powerful draft tool. Um, you know, Set has a lot of different roles that he can fit into, but... Uh, my money would be on Galio support here. That's been a, a pretty popular pick in the last several patches. Yeah, I would guess Galio support with set top more than likely. Like, I don't think it's entirely out of the question that we could see Galio mid and say set jungle. I think that would be kind of weakening your composition because I feel like Galio as a whole. Even though his best lane, quote unquote, is mid lane in terms of being able to impact the map, I think just with how the meta is right now, he just slots better as a support at the moment. In set supports, not something a lot of players in this elo that I would expect to play. So I think top lane's most likely because that's where he was for a majority of season 10. Um, bands, we're seeing two of those aforementioned jungle picks, Talia and Lilia being taken away as we're seeing Alistair and Leona that's definitely giving more credence to the uh, Galio support coming through as you mentioned X-Man definitely and I don't think I've seen a draft yet in season 11 that did not have a jungler coming out of uh, the first pick phase unless you know Poppy is indeed their jungler and you know we're about to find out but Olaf finally makes it into the draft here because I think he should make it into most drafts uh, at this point in the season, but he makes it into second pick rotation. A little strange, but uh, at least he got there in the end. Yes, and usually Olaf's one of those champions that gets picked 
very early. He is incredibly strong right now. Um, the Gore Drinker, as has been mentioned many, many times, actually gives Olaf a mid to late game relevancy once he picks up that item along with the Steric Gauge, and he doesn't fall off the face of the cliff after 20 minutes anymore. Yeah, and that's the thing about Olaf as well, is that Sans Gore Drinker, he's still pretty strong. Like He's still a pretty good jungler without it. Kind of same position as Redacton, um, was fine. Perfectly strong champion before Gore Drinker, and then after it came out, a whole nother level, right? So uh, even with the nerfs, it's going to take a while before the champions that really made good use of the item to actually go out of the meta, because so many of them are strong anyway. It just kind of was a cherry on top for them. But um, we're actually on our last pick here on the red side, but uh, back on blue side there, Rakan and Zoe locked in. Um, so that, to me, signals that Poppy's going to the jungle, which is an interesting um, an interesting pick. I mean, that's the only best way I could say it. There's not a lot of um, movement abilities over on the red side here, over on Burger Flips. There's I'm precisely one. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, think, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure Seth's alt is unstoppable, so I don't think you could even stop that one, but you can QSS it, but it doesn't get stopped by movement blocks. Yeah, so, so it, it really is just Galio, and that's that's it. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I like Poppy. I think Poppy Jungle is fun, um, but I also think Nar Jungle is fun. Uh, <laughs> so, I know, mean, maybe... I think Morgana Jungle is fun. So. Yeah, right? <laughs> and it sits in that kind of same headspace, right? It's like I'm playing this in a, a norm or something with... Uh, uh, my friends or whatever it's like yeah poppy jungle i'll do it <laughs> poppy but um yeah this competitive play we'll see how they uh how they deal with that one i mean when you look at it poppy still does have other utilities other than just being a giant movement blocker like she does have still have great area denial with her ultimate her, her cc is not great but she does do Decent enough damage for a tank. Like, it's not Orn levels of damage, but, like, you can't ignore it. So, like, definitely, she, def yeah. she, she de still definitely has a position. I just am very curious as to why they picked it so early when literally every jungler in the game not named Hecarim or Graves was still, in the, was still on the table. But... They went with it. I'm assuming it's a comfort pick um, for Fear Sparrow on the blue side for the company here. And Camille in the top lane, I don't think we need to say any words about that. Been one of the biggest priority picks up in that top lane, aside from, of course, the Crocodilicus Renekton for pretty much the last two to three patches. Absolutely, yeah. It's your quintessential strong side top. Uh, played in all elos basically uh see tons in pro play uh, especially if you're going for that strong side top there um but what's unique about camille is that it's not a kind of strong side top that you pick um to draft with your jungler right a lot of times when you go um for an aggressive top lane or something like the renekton you'll pair it with like a nidalee or an elise or a talia recently um and that they kind of pair together in this like huge early game combo camille's not super great in the early game right it's kind of a scaling side lane champion um that wants to get the split push going in the mid to late game right and that doesn't necessarily work or play nice with a jungler um so i think that kind of enables our poppy pick a little bit here is that poppy doesn't really have to go top for the strong side top laner and this is pretty unique to camille it's basically the only top laner that has this play style yeah, because because the thing about Camille is that she has decent damage and decent gank set up, but she really doesn't start coming online until she gets her first item completion, um, whether that is either the Find and Sunder or the Triforce, regardless of which one she ends up going. Once that's usually completed, that's when she usually starts coming online and starts really starting to take over the game. But taking a look at the rest of the composition of that the company has drafted, I feel like their bot lane and the Zoe pick don't mesh all that well, in my opinion. What are, what are your thoughts? So the perfect Zoe game, I've always said this, is something like a 2-0-10 score line with most damage in the game. I'll tell you why. And it's that the point of the champion, right, uh, is to lock you down with a bubble 
even just once or twice in lane and get the kill on you, right? Now, that doesn't end up happening because Zoe's been in the game for a while. People know how Zoe works. They're not going to walk into the bubble, not going to put themselves in a position where they get hit by the bubble because they know it means death. Uh, and we're at a plat level, so, you know, I feel comfortable saying that Akuma's going to have a pretty good time avoiding this damage. Um, what... As Zoe's job is, is to deal tons of damage, uh, so much damage that you can't ignore it, and then give the kill to somebody else. And uh, the thing about Kaiza is that you're going in, uh, you're trying to duel. Um, it's a very short range champion, um, a very like hard engaged champion, especially like Rakan. Camille and Poppy, uh, and the Zoe is very much a hit you from distance until you have 10 health, and then my carry comes in and kills you. Um, and those two things kind of work, uh, they're juxtaposed, right? Um, not exactly working together. Yeah, like, like the way I always view it is I slot Zoe in into that proverbial sense as a artillery piece of a mid laner along the lines of Zareth, Velkaz, Zoe, that's pretty much the only three. And then for like AD carries, like Jin would be a Jinner, Varus would be the comparison from the AD carry role. Basically, they want to sit back, hit you with their abilities from a, from a screen away, and there's not much you can do about it. And then you have the rest of the composition, which is either a 4 1 composition, which they can execute fairly well. Poppy's great for disengage. Like he can't, I mean, you can't really disengage a, or you can't really disengage an Olaf, but you can delay everyone else getting in and it allows you to get out. Um, but on the other side of the coin, you have a very standard hard dive team fight composition with the set Olaf, Oriana, Misfortune and Galio composition coming in for Burger Flip. It's massive, this team fight combo, right? Um, especially with the jungle pick here, Poppy for Fear Sparrow. Uh, I don't think Blue Side gets dragons this game. If they do, something's gone very, very wrong for Burger Flip. Yeah, unless the bot lane runs it down, Poppy, yeah. sh Poppy should not be able to contest the first two Drakes potentially drake three we could see a fight for it depending on items coming in uh obviously this is plat evo so anything can happen yeah definitely but it's a in, in, a, in a standard sense if i was the company i would be like we're just not gonna fight the first two dragons we're gonna look to play cross map and just keep vision on it so that way they know when olaf's doing it just so that way they have that timing window so Poppy can either look to go invade, look to gain top side, um, establish deep vision. or So Poppy's doing something on the other side of the map that's still gaining some sort of advantage, even though the fact that they can't directly contest the dragon. Certainly, yeah. And uh, it's going to be a, a knockdown drag out fight over these objectives for sure in that mid to late game. Um as Olaf and Misfortune start to fall off and um, things will be looking a little even. But yeah, just at the start of it, I mean, bullet time, normally just Misfortune with bullet time in a solid position at level six gives you the first two dragons. Like that's, it's how strong the ability is. Um, you deal so much AOE damage to uh, so many early game targets that it's it's insane. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm excited for this game. Yeah, and taking a quick look at look as we are getting into the loading screen. Nothing terribly surprising. Uh, Hail Blades Poppy is a little bit interesting. I think most yeah. jungle poppies that I see either go Dark Harvest or Electrocute. But Hail Blades isn't bad. Um, Grass for Camille's pretty typical Conqueror for Olaf set. Pretty typical Phase Rush versus Electrocute. Again, pretty typical. But they're, they're, the, the Misfortune Keystone I do want to bring attention to because I, I've been seeing it crop up a lot more lately, lately in terms of professional play. And I always find it really interesting, which is this Arcane Comet build. I don't know if you've heard of it or seen of it, Axeman. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Um, what what I, what I find curious about it is, of course, you start tier on the misfortune. It's basically pure lane dominance. You max your E and just drop E's onto on the enemy's face over and over again, and make them cry. Sure, sure yeah. Yeah, and it's a, a potent build, especially into a team comp that, or a, a bot lane duo that wants uh, that engage, right? Um, the Rakan and the Kaiser are definitely two champions that like to go in, uh, have a lot of damage, have a lot of burst, um, especially with, you know, a and Rain on Kaiza. So um, the E helps you poke them down from a safe distance, but it's also like a disengage tool, right? Uh, you could just drop it on top of yourself and then walk backwards through it. And it makes it a lot more difficult to chase you down. And um, remember, Misfortune only needs a couple seconds by yourself for Strut to come back off uh, cooldown off of the uh, combat. And then you could just walk away from most situations. So uh, the E helps you a lot with just safety. Yeah, but I'm kind of curious to see whether or not we're going to see the traditional Gale Force build or if we're going to see a much more lethality focused build coming in for Misfortune. But we are! On to the Rift for game number one here of this best of three series between the company and Burger Flip Pap Platinum. On the blue side, we have Boy versus Girl up in the top lane on Camille. Fear Sparrow in the jungle on Poppy. Jenka in the mid lane on Zoe. And Michaela Crespi. And, of course, King Basilius down in the bottom lane playing Kaisa and Rakan. And over here on the red side, about to get invaded here by the five stack. We'll get that roster for you in just a bit. <laughs> Yikes. Floofy Cat flashes away from the uh, invade there. But uh, over here on the red side, you have Burger Flip Platt. And uh, that roster up in the top lane, Kral Sultan. Um, on the set in the jungle position, it's Remzi V9. On Olaf. Mid lane, it's Kuma on uh, Oriana. Down the bottom lane, it's Carbon and Floofy Cat Ears, who just blew their flash there on the invade. Um, down here in the bottom lane on a Misfortune in Galio. Yeah, I, I do want to kind of look at this Galio pick a little bit because, uh, like, looking at Floofy Cat Ears' match history, they very much enjoy playing those hook supports. So the fact that they went for. The first pick, Galio, I found rather odd because his top three most played champions almost every season is Thresh, Blitzcrank, and Nautilus. And yet they go for the Galio, which, like, you can play aggressive in lane as Galio. Like, that is something you can't do. But I always classify Galio as much more a defensive support. For sure. And that's uh, kind of what his role has been fleshed out as in seasons past is just kind of you know he's get this big aoe taunt you can just drop it on people um uh, you, you can just drop it on people and get a lot of good disengage but uh what's happened more recently is that it's kind of become synonymous for part engage supports the leonas the nautiluses um to like get more of a roaming role um you're more of a like i'm gonna leave my bot lane alone and go mid or something like that. Uh, it's a very popular playstyle for Leona's and Nautilus and stuff. Oh, uh, here's the uh, tank from Frenzy Ramsey. with the level 2 gank. Michaela's way... Oh, King Basilius. I'm not sure I agree with how he played that. Unless he skilled up the Q level 2. So we do have a trade going up at the top side of the map. Um, with also getting a decent enough trade off versus Boy versus Girl because... Like, King Basilius just stood there and watched. Oh, yeah. The old uh, solo queue support trick. Just stand there and watch, right? Um, I stopped like, I can understand there. it if he, if, if he <laughs> skilled up Q, because if he skilled up Q, if he goes in to use the W, then he ends up trading places with his AD carry. But in my personal opinion, I feel like you generally want to, you generally want to hold your E. I don't like this gank coming in yeah. from Fierce Sparrow. He is going to get the stun, going to get a lot of damage down, but... Okay. Boy versus Yikes. Bo having to trade flashes. Poppy is going to get the movement speed okay. to secure yeah. blood up in that top lane, but... Did you see that wave Boy versus Girl had? If yep. I am a top laner, I am telling my jungler, do not come top lane right now, please! <laughs> yeah, that I'm was trying to take two this. full wave stack. Yep, and they lost the majority of it. Teleporting back in, Kral Sultan now. 
And Boy vs. Girl uh, missed their opportunity for a back timer. They're going to reset now, but Kraus just going to crash another couple waves into this turret. Yikes. Bot lane, things get worse and worse for the company. And we kind of expected this to be bad. You know, MF's a very strong early game AD carry. A uh, combo with Galio, one of the better supports right now. This is a very strong lane, but I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Uh, Here's Ramsey. And the teleport. Oh, that's just going to be a very easy oh. double kill. They're trying to get the trade kill, but there's not going to be anywhere near enough damage going down onto Foofy Cat here to get the trade back. But that is a very early TP down on Kuma. They did have the wave push out, so they're not going to be losing okay. anything in the mid lane. Unfortunately, Boy vs. Girl missed that uh, hook shot just by a little bit. It's going to get a fair bit of damage back down onto Carl Salton, so not going to lose out too badly, but that's already a 1,000 gold advantage to the side of Burger Flip Platinum just based off this massive difference down in the bottom. Yeah, really, and you also have kills on a Ramsey and Kuma as well. Oh, the oh, dive top side? Dive top side. They're not going to have enough damage to finish it off as uh, that Haymaker is a uh, Yikes. Little, bit, little bit of a good tool to avoid getting dove. But it is going to push him very low, but it is set, so we all know he gets 9 billion regen when he's below 50% HP. Yeah, and I think he's going to take the reset on this one, but he did have perhaps the opportunity to regen and lane. He's actually sticking around. Um, just channeling the back, I guess, to give himself options. But he got the regen on the Doran's shield as well. Um, but, you know, regen is regen. Still takes quite a while. Remzy on dragon now. First dragon is going to be infernal. And this is uh, what we were talking about with this poppy pick. Is that they're... It, Olaf can do this to a lot of junglers, right? But there aren't too many junglers that have, like, zero chance of going for first dragon on Olaf. Um, Poppy's one of them, so go ahead and say. Uh, just not really able to... Especially with how far behind the, the bot lane yeah. is right now for company. Yeah, you, you just don't have the lanes for it either, right? So, um, it's unfortunate. Ramsey gonna take the opportunity to counter jungle as well. Put himself even further ahead. Well, he's actually down a lot. Yikes! Though he does have the blast. Oh, the Poppy! Oh. The Poppy 2K IQ, the sh should be wow. a tad Olaf. That's that that's one of the, the cheeky little poppy interactions that not everyone knows about. Which is that the uh blast code does count Yikes. as a dash. So uh for for those of you who want to go play Poppy in your solo queue game, if an enemy tries to escape with a blast code, you now have a little way to make sure uh uh you don't get to get away so easily. Few things are as infuriating as an Olaf main than procking Ragnarok. <laughs> So you can avoid a bunch of CC and then going to blast cone over a wall and it's just not working on you. <laughs> <laughs> I am you just hit it. The number of times you have done that. Oh, it's greater than one. Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, oh uh, it's real bad. But taking yeah, a second, taking a second here. Um, we're, we're looking at just about the past seven minute mark lanes fairly even across the board in terms of CS other than the bot lane which is a 15 CS advantage over to the Misfortune right now. Slowly going to grow larger due to the wave crashing into the Misfortune right now. But um, we did not mention it, but Olaf did go for a straight buff to buff clear, stealing the the red buff away uh, from the Poppy on level 2, um, which is why his, his tempo was in that bottom lane at such an unexpected time, um, which gave his bot lane advantage, but has really given Poppy the advantage to stay in this jungle matchup a lot longer than I would ordinarily think so. For sure. It's almost like he's trying to do too much, right? Um, go buff to buff to steal the enemy buff is a very aggressive clear to start off with, and then completely soloing Dragon. While it's something that Olaf can... Um, feels bad it feels bad for any jungler because what you're doing is you're oh, sacrificing a bunch four man dive top yikes this is gonna be real bad for kraus sultan yeah oh, there is a gotta... fairly decent way remsey is here to try to defend rift herald is gonna be dropped they're gonna try to chunk it down below that three plate mark 
I don't think they're going to quite be able to do so. It should be about a plate and a half left. Uh, they are going to get the oh, pullback. Wow. Electric Spare is going to take a fair bit of damage from the tower, but they're not going to get any more than those two plates. Kuma has roamed up from the middle lane, but no deaths. Just a fair bit of damage on to Fear Spare and those extra couple turret plates, but that got split up against a lot of people. I'm not the biggest fan of that, honestly. Yeah, I don't think that was a good play. I think it was misplayed. I think if you get the turret there, it's probably worth it. Um, and the reality is, is that you have the damage with four of you to get that turret down bef uh, below two and a half plates and then drop the Rift Herald for the turret. I think that would have been a much better move. Um, but I'm also not really sure what happened to the dive. Um, they just didn't dive cross salt, but I don't know why. I mean, Ramsey showed up. It's still 4v2. Um, it's not like Olaf has hard CC or anything to like stun you up under tower or something. Um, so, oh, this yeah, is, the, the, this is such a big feels bad as an AD carry yeah. player. <laughs> you, yeah. you, you just see that large minion wave and, and you just can't walk to it. <laughs> yep. And they're all casters too, right? So you're having a hard time lasting these. I think they ended up missing like four or five of those. Um, yeah, it's now 30 CS down the bottom lane. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not good. Not going well. Next dragon up in 40 seconds here. Ramsey's already in the area. Good boy. And yeah. Fear Sparrow is topside. Setting up a whole boatload of vision in that river. Check out the river, Primus. What's going on up yeah, there? Yeah, it's also different on the other side of the map. But we're going to have to knock him. Nice two-man shock. But Kuma should still die, though. More sparkles. This is going to be just enough to ensure the kill on that back side here. They're trying to get some of this vision cleared out with the mid laner going down, but Kuma does almost have TP available. They could very easily come for that, but without Shockwave, like, Shockwave, I don't think they actually end up contesting this, so the company gets a cheeky dragon due to for a sure. very nice gank in the mid lane coming in from Fierce Sparrow. They're going to start it up anyway. To be honest, I feel like between the three of them, they could maybe walk up and contest because one good bullet time would really flip that fight on its head, but they're not going to go for it. Um, not going to go 3v4 anyway, but it, that's really the whole purpose of their comp is that even 3v4, Olaf running in into Galio Ald, into bullet time should be able to win that fight for themselves. And I, Yeah, oh, see? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at least they get something with it. <laughs> yeah, that should they be might get this tower as well. because Kais is chunked well below half. Fear Sparrow is here, but I don't think he—I don't think Fear Sparrow can do anything on this pop because he'll have to sour from falling down. Well, they're giving it their best why, why, shot. Why are you not walking? Why are you not walking to your shield? Yikes! Where's your shield? Um, Feels well, pretty bad. Boy versus girls TP just to dissuade the tower from falling, but they are going to oh, no. get the catch on a Foofy Cat here. So we do have the TP coming in from a Crawl Assault. And this is going to oh, be a wow. five down the bot lane. Boy versus girl goes in the backside. Jenga is going to get to the only way. Oh, that's not great. Massive from what? That is going to almost be a clean ace out of nowhere coming in from Burger Flip Platinum, and Kuma is just swag walking away. Cool guys don't look at explosions. They certainly don't, and that's the combo from Burger Flip without bullet time, by the way. Um, <laughs> it, it'd assumedly be uh, much scarier with that ability up, and they didn't use Hero's Entrance either, so two of the big team fight ultimates not using that fight just destroy the enemy team nonetheless. They're up 3k now. Um, down that one dragon, which is a real shame, to be honest. They could be halfway to Dragon Soul by now, but uh, still on a pretty good snowball. See if they can keep it up here. Um, mythic items starting to come out. Gorging are completed for Remzy. That's a, a pretty easy item to complete. It's a fairly cheap one, uh, especially for yeah for Olaf, and then Divine Sunder completed up top. Is that Divine Sunder? Is that the name yeah. of the item? Yeah, it's Divine Sunder. Yeah, there you go. So, um, currently down just under two, 3,000 gold for the side of the company, but, I mean, you have, you have Kaisa scaling. Uh, Boy vs. Girl is gonna get taunted up here. I don't see them going down, because, uh, Hookshot's a wonderful and useful ability. But, um, lane assignments are really interesting. 
They swapped their bot lane to top to defend their weak tier one while Carl Salton rotated to mid lane and Kuma went bot. Yeah, um, and this is interesting uh, to say the least, but uh, I agree with Bot going top up there with Camille. It's just going to be very difficult for Boy versus a Girl to get anything done with a disengage there from Galio. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure what our solo laners are doing here for Burger Flip. So it's a little different. Well, they did there pop Ragnarok and uh, Rift Herald 2 is coming up. And Rift Herald 2 is one of those objectives I wish teams didn't prioritize. Yeah, it's difficult to Let's make use the of... There's four camps there. up right now. Yep. Yeah, and they are both sides prioritizing it. Uh, that's yeah, that's all 10 champions. Oh, <laughs> uh, interrupt on the poppy disengage. They're going straight into the back line with Carl Salton. Does not have the face breaker to get the engage up. That's a very nice combo from Ooh. the Ricard, but the shockwave is far more powerful. Chunking out the entire side of backside. There comes the bullet time, but the bullet time has to get canceled immediately as Carbon is turned into a Carbon footprint in the backside of that team fight. The fight is still going on. So many low health, but Run Runty gets a massive heal from that court maker. But in the end of the day, it is now an ace coming in for the company. As dear lord, I don't think either team really knows know, knows what is going on right now. I certainly don't. I mean, the bullet time came out. Uh, got like three waves out before uh, Carbon went down. Fluffy Cat Ears lands the hero's entrance onto exactly nobody. Uh, after that, I don't think Kraus Salton did a whole lot of damage in this fight. And um, towards the back end, it was just Kuma and Ramsey. And they, uh, they did not have a, a whole lot to do in that 2v4. So the Command Shockwave was pretty good. But, uh, you know, just one Command Shockwave does not make for a, a team fight. A uh, comp, right? You, you need to use your tools a little bit more effectively than that. The positioning from Carbon was super weird. It looked like they were, like, on the blue side of the river, yeah. Um, like, f like shooting backwards or something. And I'm wondering how they got there because it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'd, I would have to watch it again, but uh, somehow they got like on the enemy back line, like firing back towards their team, and they died very quickly. But they are starting up this cloud Drake. It's just something good to have as Rift Herald's drop. In the mid lane, Bubble's gonna land onto Floopy Cat Ears. We do have the Charm coming in. They're getting immediately onto Carbon and immediately taking him off the map as they're trying to get the disengage off to rotate back down into this dragon as Carbon, one of the big power points for the side of Burger Flip Pot, is off the map. And honestly, I think that means if you are Burger Flip Pot, you have to concede yet another dragon. Almost certainly here, and super, uh, super weird, right? For Burger Flip, they got this big team fight comp, a lot of early game champions, and they're just not getting the dragons. They got the first one uh, off the Olaf solo, and then they've lost every one of them since. Um, all the Rift Heralds too. Yikes! Drowsy for Fluffy Cat Ears, but the I, 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 I won't connect. Like Burger Flip has drafted like a Exodia comp, but they're never setting up all the pieces properly as Exodia in order to have everything work properly. Yeah, they keep they they got all the pieces in their deck, and they just keep drawing Karibo over and over again. And yeah, because uh, uh, in that annoying. specific fight. You had three members of Burger Foot Plat on that little ramp, and then the other two members were over in their blue buff pit, so they were split up. They couldn't come together and actually form Exodia to get the proper team fight comp going on here. But so a lot of game left to be made. We're just crossing the 18 minute mark here. We're sitting at a very, very small 500 gold lead for the side of the company here, and uh, Carl Salton, you do not win this fight anymore, I'm sorry. Oh, but the hero's entrance is gonna come in, it's gonna buy a fair bit of time. Can they get the turnaround? Yes, they should be able to with Ooh. the follow flash from Carl Salton, getting that juicy 700 gold shot down, but on the other side of the map, we did see Kuma falling down to the tandem of, I believe, the bot lane and Jenka coming in for the side of the company here. So it's a one-for-one one across the map, and gold still staying fairly even, but mid lane tower is under fire. 
Yeah, you can't be giving up kills like that if you're like a mage like Kuma is playing. Um, so much of the play style and the success and the success of this style of champion, the, the battle stars out. And Brandon rocked away. So much of the success of the late game mage is understanding when to back off, when to run away. And if you're just dying randomly in the jungle or uh, randomly in lane like that, it starts to give away a lot of the pressure that the champion brings to the table. Yeah, like one of those things when if you're a champion with low mobility, essentially your stop line needs to be the the first entrance to the river on your side of the map. Once you hit that point, you cannot go past it if you do not have some sort of mobility or an escape tool. Definitely. Or you have to have some crazy tracking, right? On yeah. everybody on the enemy team. <laughs> yeah. And that's so. not really something Kuma has had, to be honest. Uh, the vision game has been a little suspect. There's definitely a lot of blue wards on the map, but their placement is interesting. Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's like... Oh, there's the paddle star. Okay, Ramsey is now dead. But... Uh, a little fight, maybe. So yeah, I you're... do want to... There we go. Yeah, they are going to get the charm, but the Grand Entrance are already used, so they're not going to get a follow-up. That's going to be a massive bullet time, but it doesn't have any CC to hold anyone in place. Poppy does try to channel the ultimate, but is not going to be able to get it off, and is it is going to get interrupted as soon as Cat Ears is going to secure the kill on the uh, mid-animation of the set ultimate. They're going to look to try to set a Baron. However, Camille is unanswered in the bot side of the map. She can threaten an inhibitor if they go for this. She also has teleport, right? So she could very well join the fight as quickly as they want. However, the company don't have the jungler, right? So they can't really contest this Baron. They can kind of just try and fight them off of it, which is going to be pretty difficult to pull off. Ramsey, low on health, though, after eating that paddle star earlier. So they might be able to oh, get a to go as in. They're trying to contest it before he has girls in all by himself. Shockwave hits. Nobody, but it's just a one for one. Ramsey has fallen, so they do not have smite in order to finish the Baron. So they are able to forestall the Baron. They do get bot lane tower as well in the trade. Ooh. Oh, the battle star from Jenka. We do have the fight still going off. Boy, there's a girl eating so much damage, oh. but no, another battle star from Jenka. Michaela tried oh. to do it again, but they're just not strong enough on this Kaiser right now. In a very messy fight, but at the end of the day, Baron stands and looks disappointed. So, Jenka on the Zoe is massive, right? Um, tons of damage, so much. But remember at the start of this game, I was saying that a perk, uh, the perfect Zoe game looks like dealing the most damage in the game, but giving all the kills over to a carry. Um, and I stand by that, right? Jenka is getting these kills, getting the damage down to enemy members of the enemy team, but it is burst damage, right? And burst damage is only valuable up to a certain point. Uh, and only valuable up to a certain point in the late game, too, right? You're looking at a team that can get pretty tanky. Um, and, yeah, hitting them with paddle stars like that on cooldown, while it is pretty cool and pretty valuable, is not as valuable as the Fed Kaiser would have been. Who, by the way, is still down 50 CS. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a rough place for him to be in. Yeah, Kaisa is a long way away from being at two items. We are going to have the ultimate coming in from Cross Salon. We do have the Heroes Entrance coming in over the top, but it only focuses outfield spare. We do have the slam into the wall coming in. Boy and the girl on the backside. Shockwave only landing on to keep it so it's but that bullet time just completely destroys the dive coming in from the side of the company. Fear Sparrow is still alive. And Ramsey has fallen, so they still have the ability to fight for this dragon if they can get properly set up. We do have the, the TP coming in off the reset coming in from Kumo, but no shockwave is available here, but they're going to need some poke if Spare is going to have to find a miracle way to get in range, but I think it's just going to be two for two drakes. Both teams going to be a long way from Soul. Yep, that's a lot of cloud dragons for either side, so a lot of Ultimate CDR coming in, or Ultimate Haste, I guess. I don't know. Oh, we do have Carsalt, and it's going to get a fairly nice Haymaker coming in. A lot of damage is going to come down. Poppy Ultimate is actually going to get through this time. Very nice use of the dash combination coming in from because King Basilius, even if the Paddle Star, excuse me, even if the Trouble Bubble goes wide, but it doesn't matter when you get a Paddle Star right in the face coming in from Jenka as Jenka comes, catches that fact. That shut down on that misfortune here, but it's still anybody's game as we're crossing towards that 24 minute mark. And 
to be honest, I think with the position Zoe is in right now, as long as they can get Kaisa and just funnel some farm into her, I don't see them losing this game because the Zoe is absolutely massive. And if you look at the comp for the side of Bur Burgerfoot Platinum, like unless you're committing the set ultimate, you don't really have a way to respond to the Zoe poke. Yeah, not really, right? Other than just trying not to get like hit by it, I guess. Um, obviously, it's going to be a little bit harder to hit Ramsey if he's got Ragnarok up. You're not going to be able to bubble him. Um, but yeah, it's no real way to respond. But as we get further into the game, a lot of members of Burger Flip are getting tankier. Uh, and those paddle stars are going to be hitting less and less hard right there's kind of a plateau that zoe's gonna hit at some point where it's like okay this does you know this much damage especially with lutens too um if you're going for night harvester i think you can, might be a little bit more lethal with the damage but uh, i think with lutens you might plateau a little bit as far as how much damage you could do <laughs> jesus by the way full armor for kraus alden so <laughs> armor for almost everyone aside from merc treads there is not a single MR item yet. Yeah, definitely. If, if Ramsey went straight into a Spirit Visage here, I think that might be the best play for him. Because even Kai's is dealing oh, yeah, magic damage, more right? Armor. Unless he's going for a Gargoyles. Which... I have not actually seen a lot of people actually go Scar Gargoyles this season. Yeah, I don't think I have either. Um, so mostly I like Sterix Gate. Yeah, mostly, mostly a Sterix gauge angle, but Carbon looking for the fight, just gonna walk away. Um, so to, uh, to, to discuss the build that we were discussing for the Misfortune did end up going for that Gale Force route after picking up that Muramana, as we are gonna have a uh, small pause um, due to some internet problems for the AD carry. We should be getting back into things here momentarily if the chat is not lying to us. So... We're at 25 minutes into the game, Axeman. Gold is virtually even at this point in the game. If you are both the company and Burger Flip, I want you to take one in each turn. What is your game plan at this point in the game? Uh, Burger Flip are looking to just work through the objectives, um, try to fight over objectives. Uh, and if they can't fight over them anymore, which is coming, you know, 30 minute more, uh, that 30 minute mark is coming, you want to try and get an inhib as quickly as possible. So you're going to see them trade uh, Baron, maybe trade, here we go, Kraus Sultan. Yeah, but again. they are going to get the flash follow taunt into the knockup coming in. That's going to be a lot of CC Boy versus Go. He's going to get the dash overall, but the follow flash is going to come in. And Boy versus Girl is just not respecting that hero's entrances. That's the most, that's the second time we've seen that happen in the side. Anyway, so what Burger Flip are looking for is an inhib because the reality is if this game goes past 30 minutes, they're just going to get suffocated by the 1-4 um, from Boy vs. Girl and the rest of uh, the company there. So they need to break on the base, they need to get an inhib as soon, uh, as soon as possible so they can get super minions running down a side lane to relieve some of that pressure. Uh, if you're the company, you kind of just scale and try not to lose objectives and then just choke out you know, Burger Flip with that 4-1 as you work further into the lake. End. Yeah. Actually, I think you got a little ways from your mic there. You, you, you went a little quiet there, but... Sorry about that. So just check your mic, make sure things are okay on that end. But we do have Dragon spawning here in... 30 seconds here, but it looks like they're trying to make a dragon for Baron trade, and considering it's not Soul Point, I love this call coming in from the company if they're able to pull it off, but no, it looks like they're being stuffed out because the Drake hasn't even spawned yet. Camille is, Boy vs. Girl is coming in with the teleport. They are going to get a fair bit of chunk on the Galio. Baron's down to 3k. Renzi is here. Bull time is going to come across. It is going to be very low, but the spike comes down for fear. Sparrow as they are going to get the kill onto Renzi on the back. So we do have the Kaiser coming in on the back. That is going to get the ice move on to Kuma on the back side. The fight will be cat here. Trying to do what he can. Is going to go and gold into the stopwatch, but it is a guy going to keep him alive. It's going to be a triple kill going over to that. Kaiser for Michaela Crispy. Crawl Song on the backside 
is going to fall as well, and this should be a ace very shortly for the side of the company. If not, that is still a 4 for O. Oh. They have Baron up. They have waves in position. This should be at least an enhancement. I would think so, and hopefully... Ooh, Carbon. Yikes. Yeah, that was, that was rough, but um, hopefully we got that mic issue fixed. How do I sound now, Primus? Yeah. <laughs> Sounding better. All right. Um, yeah, so they break open the inhib turret there. Probably going to get the inhib as well um, with the Baron Empowered Minions. and Yikes. Yeah, they pick up that third dragon as well. There's the counterattack. It's going to fall Just, flat. You know, unfortunately, Olaf's throwing arm is it? Fully up to stuff, he can't quite throw it far enough to catch up to uh, catch up to the company here. But they uh, do secure that inhibitor off of a very good team fight and a very well called Baron play. And Michaela goes to be on this Kaisa now sitting at seven three and eight is absolutely massive, backing with almost a full items worth of gold. Yeah, just straight up buys the ruin it ruins hurricane, and I honestly feel like. Barring a perfect team fight coming in for the side of Burger Flip Platinum, I think the game's pretty much over for them. Yeah, I mean, your jungler's fallen off completely. Um, your AD carry isn't far behind there. And uh, a lot of those advantages that you had earlier in this game are now gone. So, Carl Sutton trying to get the fight down. There's Gale Force out. Hey, that's a pick. Yeah, that is going to buy them a little bit of time, and Boy vs. Girl continues to get caught without having any vision set up in these sidelines. Like, if I have, I would say one thing going forward for the side of the company is just be like, Boy vs. Girl, calm down a little bit. You have two wards in your inventory. Take a second, drop those, so you're not getting 2v1 on it on cooldown. It's going to eat a lot of damage. Ooh. Nice use of W to stop the Galio charge, but... Ramsey does not care. It will just stand on your face, but it's not going to do enough damage to secure the kill as it's just going to be a very quick and clean 3 for 0 oh, as this Kaisa, despite being down so much CS, still down a lot of CS, is fully online and is absolutely terrifying at this stage of the game. Yeah, I'll say. Um, this is quite the lead. Kind of came out of nowhere, too, right? Things were pretty even just a couple minutes ago. But, uh... And then uh, Baron happens. <laughs> yep. Yeah, this Baron was... followed by another ace. <laughs> it's one heck of a Baron power play here, and they're gonna end the game pretty convincingly. Carl Salton do anything about this? We'll see. They're gonna try, but I don't think so. Couple more auto attacks. Oh no, nope. They might be able to. Fear the is not gonna have the damage. Okay. They are going to stall out the Nexus, but they did lose a second inhibitor on the back side of it. And with supers already crashing in the mid lane, there's nothing on the map that they're going to be able to do right now. And it's pretty much them just trying to get, put band-aids on their face right now. Yeah. Um, and they weren't able to break open an inhib uh, like I had been previously talking about. Like they, If they had bust open the bottom inhib, um, it would have been relieving a lot of pressure for them right now. But they didn't, right? You know, They, they weren't able to get that. They lost the Baron play. Um, and didn't trade enough back for it, so uh, yeah, they, they just kind of just kind of suffocating now. Even without the Baron buff, uh, the company shouldn't have too hard a time putting the uh, the stranglehold on them now. Yeah, it's pretty much only a matter of time at this point. Um, as uh, finally seeing so. Uh... Mm. Defensive vision being set up for boy versus girl down in this bottom side to allow them to split push effectively here. Jenka is uh, a little bit out of position here. He's going to get taunted up. Ragnarok is coming in. Stopwatch is going to buy a little bit, but no support coming in quite yet. Very nice engage coming in from, from King Vasilis. So we do have a dive on the backside while Kaisa is just eviscerating the front line of of Burger Flip, but on the other side, Boy vs. Girl is going to fall, so it is currently a 2 for 0 for the side of Burger Flip Platinum, but Jenka is able to secure one kill on the backside. Kaisa is here trying to get the assassination. Is going to get the Ooh. assassination on Carbon, trying to get the kill. No! The, the shot command dissonance 
going to be too strong coming in from Kuma is going to take McKay up off the map here. But we do have double stacks. Super minion waves coming in. Shockwave is going to come in from Kuma onto Jenka. Jenka trying to get the damage down. Nope, but the dash from Fierce Barrel with the follow-up Q should be enough. But no, the flash is still up. They're trying to get on to Jenka. Fierce Barrel is going to cut out the top on the other side of the map. Kuma's trying to reset, but you have, do have supers on the Nexus right now. Nexus is down to 200. 200-ish HP. Fierce Barrel trying to get the damage down. Down is not going to quite. Okay. So Jenka is not going to be able to get in range. Just the middle and inner is going to respawn with UFTP coming in from Boy vs. Girl. Boy vs. Girl should be able to do it with just a single auto attack. Making sure that the company is able to walk away with a game of one victory in just the past 34 minutes. It was an exciting win there and a uh, race to the finish for uh, the company on the back end of that game. Pretty convincing win, I'll go ahead and say. Things look neck and neck, but uh, you really just had to, um, <laughs> I guess, scale out of the, the mid game and then it was game over there. Uh, for for the burger flip, but um, yeah, it, it, was, it was super sad to see. They had a great early game team fight comp, lost a bunch of dragons in the early game, just didn't seem to be able to find any grip, and uh, they kind of floundered. Yeah, they had a really, really sharp, strong start to the game. They had that really cheeky early bot lane gank that got their bot lane very far ahead, but they just didn't seem to do anything with it. They had that really nice team fight, but if you actually go back and look at that first ace team fight, almost like three out of the five members from the company were starting that fight at like 40% HP. So it, it was one of those things where outside of that one, that first about 10 minutes of the game, like, yes, it was always very even, but I felt like Burger Flip Platinum was never fully on the same page in order to make this composition work. Yeah. Um, that, that definitely felt like what was going on there, um, that not being in the same page uh, portion. But um, some interesting charts here looking at um, just in terms of, like, gold earned. Uh, Poppy actually got like a 2,000 gold lead just on the Olaf, right? Um, it's pretty nuts. We didn't really have high hopes for the Poppy, and it seems to have gone over pretty well, uh, especially as they, they scaled into the, the mid game there. But um, even just like damage to champions, uh, yeah, Poppy still outpaced the Olaf. Um, Olaf actually had the least damage in the game, less than Rakan. Yeah, so, it's uh, it's pretty damning. <laughs> yeah, that was there. There just seemed to be a few things happen differently coming in from the Olaf pick in order to really make sure the Poppy pick really didn't wasn't able to scale up and be that front line that the company needed. However, we are going to take a short little break while we are getting set up for game number two here. Please stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We will be seeing whether or not the company are going to clean clean this series up in a quick 2-0, or whether or not Burger Flip Platinum is going to force us to a crucial game number three. Please stay tuned.
And welcome back, everyone, here to our Platinum League night here at Zero Gravity Gaming. Once again, I am Premise alongside Ackman. We saw a very competitive, until it wasn't game number one, between the company and Burger Flip Platinum. If you're coming into this game number two as Burger Flip Platinum, what adjustments are you going to be looking to make to try to extend this to a all-important game number three? So I think for starters, you want to focus less on your ball lane success um, especially when it comes to the draft I thought the set while it was a good pick probably not uh, accomplishing enough to be worth picking uh, and then first two picks in the draft being your bot lane and then having a performance like that is not great right um, the way the meta works is that junglers enable laners right now right um, it's not that you know how it always was or laners come and save junglers and junglers are just there to smite things um the jungle is the most important role right now uh so fourth picking your jungle red side is not acceptable <laughs> and it's just not gonna work um do you let the company get away with murder here with this poppy pick yeah that that should have happened especially when you take a olaf here but I mean, I don't think the early rotation on their bot lane was bad because we saw the massive advantage their bot lane was able to get. Like, the Kaisa was down 50 CS. They got the tower. Um, but I feel like the biggest issue was is that those early kills didn't actually go on to the misfortune. Yeah, they did not. And uh, a lot of that was pretty unfortunate. I mean, uh, there was also just the company taking second dragon of the game. Uh, completely uncontested, and I realized that they had just gotten the solo kill down to the Oriana, but, like, I, that shouldn't matter, right? You drafted this whole comp uh, with an Olaf and Misfortune and a Galio. Those three should be able to beat any four laners on the bot side of the map that they have, um, and they certainly could have, right? Um, you're talking about, like, a poppy jungle and, like, this Kaiza that's been getting dumpstered all lane. Uh, those aren't champions, so you're, you're fighting a 3v2. Uh, just go in there, fight, and at least try to steal the dragon. It looks like we're getting a new draft here going, and then we'll get into this uh, into this draft um, tool, whatever this is called. What is this called, Primus? Do we do we name this in terms of? It's draft law. Draft law. Okay. It's a good name. It's catchy. Any second now. All right. Looks like we're underway here. Um. And then we'll we'll, we'll get these picks rolling out here, but uh, until then. Yeah, uh, things that Burger Flip need to change, um, I just, I don't know. I mean, it didn't seem like the Oriana pick did all that much. Uh, I think Jenka pretty much had Kuma's number for the majority of that game. Uh, just too many solo deaths, right? Um, and there we go, we're into the actual draft now. Both teams are on the same sides, by the way. And we're in the uh, ban phase already. The company with the uh, strange bans, but I mean... You know, I think Burger Flip kind of proved that the meta isn't necessarily on their side here. Yeah, and we're seeing the same two early bands from Burger Flip Platinum on the other side of the coin. So, so far, it's same old, same old. Yep, everything is the same so far. Same band there in Victor 2. Let's look for this blue side first pick. I'm looking for something that's not Kaiza here, Primus. Um, it's going to be Kaiza. Huh? Mother of God. <laughs> I uh, I just want somebody to first pick Olaf, man. That's all I want. <laughs> you know that's now. not the meta right now. The meta is first pick eighty carry, or you or or you first pick something like Talia. You don't see first pick Olaf. I just want people to first pick Olaf always. <laughs> Felius coming in red side here. The pick for Burger Flip. Um, once again, just like. Huge focus on the the bot lane, um, but uh, 
should be support second pick here if they're drafting a, a similar draft style. Ooh, Lilia hovered briefly. I'd like to see that. Yeah, there we go. It's locked in. So they're, they're, they're changing things up a little bit. We did see Lilia get banned in the second phase of the last game by the company. And uh, Burger Flip Platinum's like, you know what? We're, we're not going to wait to uh, second pick phase to uh, pick Jungle this time. We're going to pick it a little bit earlier. Um, and they could also potentially get support counter pick um, going into R3 here. Uh, Ooh. Uh, the Jax, I'm assuming that's a top lane Jack. Should be, yeah, especially if we're expecting uh, the top laner to go for a similar play style. Jax and Camille are pretty similar. You just kind of scale into the late game and then nobody can match you in the side lane. Uh, you win 1-3-1 one, one, or 1-4 one, out uh, in the mid to late game there. But yeah, Jax jungle is a thing. I don't think it's a very good thing, but you know, it's a thing. Alstar locked in for the company. Okay, would you make the argument what's better? Poppy jungle or Jax jungle? I think probably Poppy. Um, I don't think late game junglers are very good right now, but of the late game junglers, I think Jax is probably one of the worst. On that, we would most likely agree, but that is a, a Malphite, and one thing Jax does not enjoy laning against is a Malphite. Yeah, this feels bad. Um, Malphite's just kind of a lane bully, um, which is real bad for late game top laners, um, especially ones like Jax, where you have that Counter-Strike ability that just blocks auto-attack-based um, damage. Malphite does not care about that, um, <laughs> right? He's just going to drop Q after Q, uh, the cheese wheels at you um, until you have two health and your counter and your counter strike's not going to matter. But um, is it called counter strike? Is that the ability? Yes. I think it is. Yeah, I was that like, that is not what Captain yeah. Flowers famously says that he it always makes him think of. Um, also, just to clarify, the miss ban for the company was the Oriana ban. Um, we are seeing Zoe being taken away from Jenga. I think that is a worthy ban after Jenga's performance in game number one on the pick. Uh, Thrash, I think, is a worthy ban as well. That is uh, Fluffy Cat Ears is one of his signature champions. Always good to get deny that, especially if an Aphelios is in the game. 100%. Now, the way the draft went in game one, it was Burger Flip banning away supports. Um, in that second ban phase, but this go around the company have drafted their support in first pick phase, uh, drafted the Alistar. So um, they kind of get that one for free, but they leave up their mid lane pick, um, which I believe they had drafted in first pick rotation or their top lane pick. Um, well, they got that as well. Uh, so their jungler, mm -hmm. yeah, their jungler is still in the, uh, still yet to be picked here, presumably for the company. Um, a lot of junglers taken off the board. The Kindred is taken away here, which is interesting. Um, company waiting for the, the last pick jungle, I guess. But um, we'll, we'll see what it's going to be. I mean, Olaf is still on the table. Um, Graves is what? Well, Graves is taken away now. Uh, so I mean, Talia, the old school, old, old school man in me is saying just pick Sejuani and you literally never lose any skirmish topside. But okay. But well, nope, it is Jack Jungle. All right. Uh, I think we will unofficially crown uh, Fierce Sparrow as the king of off meta junglers here on yeah. night one of Plat League. <laughs> sure, or old meta junglers or something. That's uh, that's that's rough. I mean, I think Jack's jungle was a thing many years ago. Uh, Poppy probably was as, as well. But... It was back when Cinder Hulk was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely Which back there. wasn't all that long ago, but it was okay. like the mid to late season nine. Uh, Burger Flip did not lock in a last pick. Uh, uh, apparently PC may have died. Awesome. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you, you know what, Axeman? You, you know what this reminds me? It would um, not be a zero gravity, zero gravity gaming stream if we did not have something go wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, no, um, we would be fools to think otherwise here. But um, I, I would have thought that they would have discussed the pick before the DC'd. Um, 
but I guess not. So we have no idea. Well, if what... it's their mid laner who DC'd. Oh yeah, no, that's that's what I'm saying. But I guess they might the... not have reached a decision before he died. I yeah, maybe I guess that seems like a very chaotic way to draft. But <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's unfortunately how most draft situations looked at from my past experiences. In, in <laughs> Five seconds left. What are you picking? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Jeez. Um. Yeah, so we kind of froze on the precipice there, but uh, we're getting in reports, perhaps humorous reports, that um, their mid laner okay, died. So, so, so. <laughs> maybe, let, maybe. let's hypothesize looking at the drafts coming in from Burger Flip Platinum. What picks would fit their composition to round things out here? So we've got Malphite, Lilia, Aphilios, and Lou right now. Um, so. Just off the cuff, Oriana would have been great. That's banned. Um, there's a lot of ball delivery, uh, a lot of wombo combo, stuff like that. They won't have the Orianas. Those banned away. Um, following that up, maybe Syndra? Um, you're playing into a Kali. So maybe like a Lissandra, maybe? Um, Annie? I'm, uh, I'm spitballing here. What do you think? Um, I think the Annie would be good. Lissandra, I think, is too far out of the meta to be considered. Yeah. I think Syndra would be a good option. Um, there's a part of me that would love to see like a Lucian mid into the Akali, even though once a Akali hits six, Lucian cries. But like, Lucian would literally make a Akali cry for the first five levels of the game. And you have yeah. AP from Jungler, so it's not like you're indexing too heavily into AD. It's a good point, for sure. Um, uh, I think that... Um, we could see something like the Yone wouldn't be bad if they wanted to go that route. It could be good, yeah. I like the the Yone option. It would depend on, as so many mid laners do, on Kuma's like strength and who they've actually played. Um, you know, because I don't want to just like dump Yone on somebody who hasn't played Yone. But um, oh, obviously not. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the same thing goes kind of like for Lucian too, um, as well. But uh, yeah, definitely some good options there. Um. Um, or if you really wanted to go an old school counter pick to a Kali, the uh, Kennen mid lane. That might be fun. That. that might be fun. Um, they kill because the Kali goes boy. in the shot. You just press R and <laughs> yep, you press R and just walk around. Maybe channel your dance animation. Um, but uh, they killed my boy uh, Imperial Mandate Kennen, so I'm very sad. That doesn't work anymore. If it ever did. I'm just trying to look here. What would be? Hmm. Okay. Starting to think maybe Kuma actually died. This might turn into a funeral stream. Uh, um, I doubt it. I think they uh they they're one of those they're they're one of those people who don't have an SSD, so it takes like five uh, years for their computers to start. Gotcha. Yep. You gotta get the SSD, everybody, if you don't have one all you uh, Yeah, your day. your public service announcement of the day. If you can get an SSD, get an SSD. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's worth the money. It's worth the investment there. But um I don't know, Primus, you wanna throw it to a break? Are we gonna talk yeah, about this I think, draft I think more? we should uh we, we we should throw it to a little bit of a break here while we're waiting for this situation to resolve itself. Um, if we get any further updates, we will be sure to let you guys know. Uh, we appreciate all you guys hanging with us and bearing us with us through this. We will be back with you guys, hopefully, in just a few minutes.
And welcome back, everyone. After that short delay, we do apologize once again, but unfortunately, technical difficulties do happen here. Um, we are back into a champion select here. Just to inform you, the pick coming in for Kuma is going to be the Malzahar for the mid lane here. Um, so that is what is rounding out the composition for the side of Burger Flip Platinum. And I have to ask, that was not a pick either of us mentioned here. So I have to ask Axman, what are your thoughts on that Malzahar coming in here as a response to the composition that we did see coming in from the company? It makes a decent amount of sense. The reason I the reason I uh, initially suggested Lissandra is because when you're talking about a Kali, there's like I think three different movement abilities, or four if you count reactivating the E. Um, you have the stealth on W, and the point being is that this champion is very slippery. And if you have point and click CC like Lissandra does then that gives you an edge, right? Especially in the very early game. And that's what Malzar brings to the table too, right? There's a suppression on ultimate. You just point and click and that's all. Uh, you can also silence somebody in AOE, which is, or you can with Malzahar, right? I haven't seen Malzahar yes. in a very long time. But it's yeah, in a line, silence, so. but it still does it in AOE. Yeah, um, you can silence in AOE, meaning that you can silence a call even if you can't see her um, and silence her even if she's moving around, so. Um, that's a lot of tools that you can use that are going to help you in lane. And it also brings a little bit more early game potency to this draft that uh, was really just a Felios bringing the damage to the table up until this point. Yeah, we are... Uh, trusty, trusty production guy mentioned that Galio would have been a great pick here, but uh, we all agreed that uh, that means there's uh, no damage coming in there. They're just kind of throwing a little bit of hovering Seraphine. Seraphine was the pick here, but... Um, I, I think I, looking... oh dear I Lord, literally want to burst into flames. Um and I hope that uh I hope I hope that we we don't make it through this night. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Axman, don't uh... lose hope, man, don't lose hope. <laughs> I don't know, man. All I'm saying is that, like the viewership keeps going up every time we restart the draft, so maybe we just keep doing drafts. <laughs> maybe that's what the people want to watch. That's that's all I'm saying, is that as soon as we start talking and we end the game, viewership just tanks. So maybe we just keep doing drafts all night. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think we just become the draft special uh, the draft special cast where we just talk about drafts for three hours. For sure. Just a slightly different draft every time. A single champion changed. Yes. Um, <laughs> it, it, we spent around. 15 minutes talking about how that impacts everything else here but um, taking it taking a step back here and looking at what the side of the company is bringing to the table is we have an incredibly strong champion in the Renekton up in that top lane oh yeah yeah um you got the the cleave, I believe, uh, which is on E. Um, Q. It might be uh, the cleave is on Q. Um, if you're talking I'm, about the AOE spin around thing, yes, it's Q. I'm talking about the, the armor, armor shred. Reduction. Armor shred I think is it's his empowered E. It's his empowered E. Yeah. Yeah. So empowered. It's either slice, dice, or both of them. Um, but whichever one it is is going to be helping a lot with Malphite, who would normally want to stack armor. Now that's not necessarily like a counter to Malphite because he's still going to be stacking a bunch of armor and Renekton's still going to be trying to deal a bunch of physical damage, but it is going to make this a much more, um, you know, potent, uh, matchup up in the top lane and Renekton. I, I like the switcheroo they pulled, right? Um, fear Sparrow drafts Jax. Obviously everybody thought that was going top. It's a late game champion. Um, Kral Sultan drafts Malphite to deal with that and be able to bully him out of lane. Whoops, boy versus girl is actually drafting Renekton, and now you have to bully, like, the quintessential lane bully. I don't know if Malphite can do that. We'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, the answer is... Mm, until he runs out of mana, he can't. Yeah. That's the um, issue. <laughs> and he's also playing against somebody that... Like, the answer to... 
lane bullies is either you stay back under turret or you just go kill them. And for Renekton, you probably could just go kill him, like, sometimes, right? Um, given the right scenario. So it's uh, a little spookier now for Carl Salton, where before he just had to poke down this late game champion. Yeah, because one of the biggest things that Renekton brings to the table is that he's resourceless, and he has built-in sustain, so... The Comet Malphite will only go so far. It certainly will. It looks like we actually got through a draft Hallelujah. this time. I don't want to think about how many times we tried to redo that, but at least it didn't get into the enough. double digits. It was enough times. It was enough times. Um, I also want to point out that as soon as the draft ended, viewership did tank. So maybe we just restart it. I'm just throwing <laughs> ideas out there. I'm just throwing ideas. No, we can't restart the draft. Okay, all right. We're going to do the actual game, I guess, but it's whatever. Spectator delay now. Um, I don't know. Anything else we can say about this one? I feel like this is um, pretty weird. Um, um, there, there, there's one other thing I do want to talk about is uh, we saw Ramsey put a lot of pressure down in the bottom lane in the last game. Something's telling me that's not going to happen this game, given the fact that he has an affiliate and a Lulu. Yep. I, mean, I think it's a pretty good point. Um, do you think he goes Moonstaff with Lulu? Is that possible? Oh, no, 100% he's going Moonstaff for the, on Lulu. Do you think Assuming um, they get, they get enough gold for it? The bigger question is, is whether or not Lily is going in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do you think they both go for it? Because I've heard it that it's much better if like two people on the team are doing it. Uh, um, I could see it in this game because you yeah. do have Malzahar and Malphite does provide enough AP damage that you're not going to be lacking AP damage if you go double Moonstone. Yeah. My only concern is that it takes a lot longer for Lulu to hit the two items than it's going to take for Lilia to hit the two items. So. Yep. Yeah, support rule not has uh, not a lot of gold, right? Especially yeah. when you're um, sticking in lane with your Aphelios and you're not like a roaming support or anything. Um, so, yeah. We'll have yeah. to see what they build here. And with that, we are just going to take a very, very brief break here while we're waiting on the rest of the spectator delay and the champion loading screen. We'll be back, you guys, in just a minute.
And welcome back, everyone, here as we're loading on to the Rift 4 game number two here between the company and, of course, the impeccable Burger Flip Platinum here as we're going to see yet another invade coming in from the company, though, this time to the other side of the map. We're going to find out whether or not they're going to have a uh, more successful invade than they did in the last game. About to find out, Kuma is oh, in danger Kuma. and AFK. Yikes. Uh, well, Fierce uh, Bear is going to start the game in a lovely spot as the Jax here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, You'll like to see it, especially for a champion that doesn't have like a fantastic early game. That helps out a lot. Minions have spawned. It used to be better back in the olden days as a jungler because I need back and you buy both parts of your jungle item. Now the jungle item is just all one item. Yep. Yeah, it's just the one item. He does back for the longsword, though, which is pretty nice. Um, feels pretty good, but uh, it's going to help with this clear. Loki, I think, honestly, on junglers like this, like, unless you're going core drinker, like, I think just picking up the early dagger is generally better. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably probably valid there. Um, like, I, I, but... I don't know enough to dig into the numbers, but, like, I like just thinking I, about it, yeah. I feel like early game, like, the extra attack speed is worth more than the AD you get from the longsword. And that's the thing, too, is I have no idea what Fear Sparrow is about to build. I don't think anybody but Fear Sparrow does. I'm assuming it's going to be Triforce or Thunder. That, yeah, that would be my guess, but, I mean, the, like, Gore Drinker is on the table. That oh, know, that like, is way too in. far forward. Nice timed exhaust coming in, though. From Fluffy Cow Ears is going to keep Carbon alive, but that is both Summoners plus the Exhaust coming in, as well as both Summoners and the Flash coming in on the other side. So, very, very aggressive early bot lane, and that is why you uh, don't posture that aggressively early on. Uh, uh, we are seeing the early level 2 coming in from Carl Salton in the top lane. It's going to give him a little bit of a trade advantage up there early on here, but... Um, Renekton, once he gets some more level, should be able to sustain relatively easily here. I would say so, yeah. Um, mid lane, Kuma's doing Oh, okay. X flash Ooh. into the combo, but Michaela's off in their own little world. I'm not in position to follow up here as we do see oh, King Basilius is going to sidestep. There's no real CC, but that is one fast little deer, and that is going to be Floofy Cat here picking up that kill. Like, I, I feel like kill. it's not the worst thing that could have happened, but it's not the best thing that could have happened here, as Car Sultan is putting a little bit of a beatdown on Boy vs. Girl. Um, something that we did not mention, Boy vs. Girl did a start in W for that level one, and that... Uh, that significantly hurts your level 1 trading, especially against a poke champion like a Malphite here. Should be able to TP back and catch most of that wave, but it's still going to be down a fair bit of CS because they are still going to miss some of that coming in here. But so far, jungles clears on both sides. Fairly even, both sides trading Scuttle. Uh, but they are looking at a potential gank in, in the mid lane coming in. From Fierce Bear is going to get the stun down, but Jenka is in no position to follow up. Is just going to chunk out Akuma a fair little bit here in the mid lane. Um, Basilis does have a possible flank position coming in on Bambi um, or Ramsey, but nope, they're just going to go back off on their own little way. And we're all going to go back to square one here. So we're looking at almost about the five minute mark here in the game. I don't think we're going to see any early dragon takes from either side, barring a massive advantage coming in from the plot lane. Yeah, and I'm not really seeing that advantage materialize quite yet, so I think you're right. I think that's a late first dragon. Maybe no dragon sold this game. Depends on how things go, but um, they're looking for level game? six. Yeah, it, it had one, um, but uh, I don't know. Um, there could have game. been one in the last game. Let me rephrase there, that. There definitely could have been. Bandle Glass Mirror completed for Ramsey. Going so for... it looks like it is going to be the Moonstone route. Yeah. Coming in from the Lilia, which I think given the fact that you essentially have a hyper carry and a bunch of CC bots, that's generally a good decision. 100%. Yeah, I think it's just the, the best build for Lilia right now. But Junkie, a lot of damage mid lane. Feels pretty bad, but 
Uh, Fluffy Cat Ears has uh, the Fairy Charm in inventory. Not sure if that's just something they bought. I think that builds into Moonstone, but it I'm does. not really sure. It builds yeah. into the shield item. Um, yeah, but, uh, and then boots there as well, but, uh, yikes, top lane. Boy versus girl not having a good time. Pretty rough for Necton lane. Yeah, I'm not sure if they did not pick up. Check. No, it clicked away. Hmm. Um. Uh... I don't think they... Well, they did take magic for this, but... I don't know if they're just not... Oh, they went Bone Blading instead of Second Wind and Revitalize, which... I think Revitalize is honestly overrated. Like, I don't think it gives you that much extra healing, but I wouldn't know. I'm a support main. And I don't play <laughs> champions, but... Uh, looks like we are going to get an early Dragon start here at about six and a half minutes. But um, Jinka has rotated down, is going to seal away the Scuttle Crab. Should be able to uh, deny that. Yeah, it's going to make it difficult to get the dragon with that up. But um, yeah, it's just going to disengage for a little bit of Remzy on the run now. But um, Oh, Hack Slash. Uh, oh, no. I yikes. thought that was going to be over the wall. I, I think so did Basilius there, but didn't, didn't quite get there. That's rough. Um, that was a, uh, <laughs> that was the, uh, every time I'm, every time I get ganked to plot lane and I try to flash over the wall, that is what happens to me. <laughs> I don't make it over the wall. It's rough. It's hard to have, hard to have it happen. Kuma hitting level seven. Sat up, up for a while. Um, not a real opportunity to use this. Jank is playing very defensively. Also just has the Merc Treads. I don't know if Merc Treads reduce suppressions. I think they might. No. No. Okay. So, it is not included but, uh, in that. It is going Knock to up to the suppressions are not but, included. Uh, we do have a combo help. coming in, but... Oh, there we go. The tail is rather low. We do have the Polymorph coming on the back, so we are going to have the root coming in. But a very nice jump coming in from Fuse Sparrow, but we are going to have TP coming in from Kuma. Fuse Sparrow is going to secure the kill on the Foofy Cat Ears on the backside they're trying to get in range to potentially drop down that flash forward headbutt is going to come back into tower onto carbon carbon is going to die to the tower for the solo kill going over to the side of king basilius we do have jenka coming in from the middle it's going to go in with a perfect execution trying to get in range on to that bambi is going to be able to have some little bit of benefit for dinner here they are able to secure the kill just before for Kaisa Falls, but the Color of Sultan is going to come in with the teleport, and the Ensemble Force is able to get the kill on the backside of it. Oh. But that isn't the triple kill okay. at the end of the day for Jenka, and uh, that is it's terrifying bad. Yep. if you're the side of uh, Burger Flip. Burger oh. Flip. That's not good. <laughs> they do have tools to deal with Akali. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, they do have the Polymorph, and they have the Mouse of Heart ulti, so, like, it's not like they have no tools to deal with the Akali, but Akali getting three kills without any offensive items is always terrifying. Yeah, um, things are pretty bad right now. Boy vs. Girl gets a couple plates for free up in the top lane as well as Krell Sultan that teleported down the bot. Now Krell Sultan's trying to punish, but to be honest, I think Boy might be baiting here. He's got ult up. He also has a support with him. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's not going to he be dead? Up. No. Oh, wow. Okay, he just walks out. All right. Yeah, well, it's the movement speed bonus from Q. Yeah, from the Q, the stolen movement speed. Meanwhile, bot side, Red is taking that dragon. Well, Rift Herald has dropped mid. Please Much better get this you. below the threshold. Yes, they yeah, have. I think they got it. Yeah. Nah. Nope. There close it is. Enough. Okay. <laughs> close enough. It was close enough. It was literally one auto attack. Okay. Yep. Close enough for rock and roll. And that's going to be an easy first tower going down. And traded for the dragon feels pretty good. That said, it's a mountain dragon. You do have a Malphite, so that, that'll that feel pretty good for the Malphite. But he did just lose lane. So. Hey, he's also down 30 CS now because of that teleport. So, uh, 
Yeah. The uh, the mountain dragon not as potent as perhaps. Yeah. The the, the red axe is backing with almost a full item. There you go. Gets the the whip. What's that item called? Chain, Iron uh, spike Iron whip. Spike. There you go. He's coming back into lane with that one. It'll be a fun time. Here's Ramsey, perhaps so on the To be gank. honest, it just looks like a metal cat of nine tails to me, but yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really look like a whip at all. But uh, I guess it is made of iron, so maybe it's yeah. just. It's just. Uh, Probably it's going significantly better this game. They still Whoops. have a bit of a disadvantage. Oh, flash! Oh, that's a oh, very nice. Oh no. They are going to get the kill from the Pyrrhic Freak that just uses Sparrows. Barely wow. going to be able to get out. What? That was. Okay. All right. Yeah, Kuma almost had him with the outplay, but kind of gets big brained a little bit there. And Fierce Sparrow and Jenka both made it get out, albeit on very low health bars. Yeah, I don't uh, think the girl's going to be able is to. Is Crowl kill. okay? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, Crowl's okay. Yeah. Boy versus yeah, Girl doesn't have enough CDR yet. Okay. Like, he, he, well, I, I will always refer to it as CDR, yes, I know it's ability haste. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, what am, what am I say? A-H? What, what is that? I don't that. know what A-H is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say that. CDR, <laughs> come on. Um, but, um, because essentially, uh, for the Renekton, in order to win to all in, the Malphite is he really needs to have two full rotations of Slice and Dice up. Uh, one to get onto the Malphite, or, and another to chase him down, or to just go in with one slice and dice, don't stun, follow, let him use the Q to try to disengage, you follow up with your second dash, you, then you look for the stun after that. So Sounds like a plan to me, Primus. Ramsey completes Moonstone, got it a couple minutes ago. Uh, Moonstone's almost completed for Fluffy Cat Ears as well, but they built their uh, their full boots of lucidity. Did they ever nerf the boots of lucidity? Because they're really yeah. strong.
not gonna come in yet. We do have the ultimate coming in onto Boy vs. Go. Immediately taken off the map is Ramsey. Boy vs. Go living so long on the back right, just taking up ev everything but Car But Carbon, Carbon has blue and white. Blue and white means you're all go black and blue. He's still trying nice. to output the DPS. Can't kite it out long enough as all of his support is gone. Carbon Salton is the only one left on the map. Carbon Salton should be falling in just a moment here. Double kill at the end of the game going over to Fear Sparrow, and that is a five for two fight victory going over to the company. Pretty good news for them there as they mount up over 5k gold lead. Good stuff. They pick up the second dragon of the game as well. This is their first, so a pretty long way from the dragon soul, but you know, getting there nonetheless. Oh, that's and, another uh, cloud. That's no fun. Oh, cloud's the best one. Love me some cloud. Um, a lot more ultimates okay, if somebody me. does pick up the soul. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. It's it's really good stuff. Get that 30-second <laughs> cooldown on the Ragnarok, and you have speed shrines all Perfect. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. No, what, what what you need to do is, um, as somebody who off rolls the top lane, is you get late-game Malphite with Cloud Soul, and you literally have a 40-second unstoppable force. I think that is more terrifying than a 30 second Ragnarok down, but that's just me. Probably, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, the <laughs> passive movement speed from it as well is pretty scary. Um, Carl Salton may be in trouble here. Boy versus girl, no empowered abilities. Uh, and eats another cheese wheel. Doesn't look good. It's not a cheese wheel, it's an ice shard. For sure, for sure. Um, not that I don't get your reference, but it's not thematically correct with the skin. It's a it's a Gouda ice shard, one of those one of those cheddar ice shards. Um. <laughs> nah, I, I think Malphite. If Malphite was a cheese, I feel like he'd be Brie. Hmm, it's a good one. I like that. But uh, Kuma bot lane shoves in the wave, starts moving up to the top side here. Um, so we're looking at a well, look at the lull state. Wow. Yeah, definite solid wall state right now. Um, Ellis would be proud. Ellis and uh, Valdez would be very proud of this wall state right now. Um, but um, right now we have Rift Herald available on the side of the company. Mid laners are side landing, top laners are side landing. And I do want to note that you. Major factor in that last team fight was the fact that Aphelios had still not completed Kraken Slayer. He based and completed that item. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Michaela didn't have Gale Force either, and there weren't actually a lot of mythic items like on the table. I think it was 50-50 whether everybody had a mythic item. So um, now that there most was... everybody has one, uh, yeah. things might be a little bit different. By the way, Fluffy Cat Ears, no Moonstone Renewer, went the Imperial Mandate. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed as well. I feel like Imperial Mandate just isn't good on anybody. They nerfed it pretty um, hard. Um, I still think it's the best option for Morgana. Uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Because, like, she doesn't really make use of the shielding stuff to get Moonstone yeah. very effectively. Like, yes, she go. has her W, so she can stay in combat fairly effectively. Oh, but they, they're going directly onto that Lulu. That Lulu oh. is not long for this world. That has a flash up, too. It's unfortunate. So, no Lulu for this fight. No Imperial Oh, Mandate. flash engage coming in from Basilius. We are going to have a two-man Drowsy coming in. Going to ensure that Carmen is able to get out temporarily, but no, Michaela swoops in with the killer in strength, securing the kill on the back side. We did have the mid tier one fall in the uh, in the end as well. Jenka has rotated up down from the bottom side. They're looking to potentially continue this, but unstoppable force is still available for the side. No, Carl Sultan does not have the unstoppable force, but they do oh. still have the ultimate oh, coming no. in from Kuma. Perfect execution Ooh. is going to come in as they do trade top lanes back and forth. We do have the Lulu respawning with the wild growth. It's going to buy a fair bit of time. Fierce Fire trying to get a range. is going to die to minions. Flying Morphin oh, is wow. going to come in. Glitterance is going to miss. They're trying to get okay. a range. Trying to secure that kill. 
at the very end, but I don't think Foofy Cat Ears is going to be able to get the range. They already used that flash. Uh oh. Foofy Cat Ears. Oh boy. Yeah. They just I, I thought out Jacob was going to take that E for a second. <laughs> right? Let's try to go for the kill. That'd be something. That would be something, but uh, not going to go for that one. You back off instead. 30 seconds on next dragon. This is the first of the cloud drags. Um, this would be either team's second dragon, but I think this one almost always goes down to the company, right? Um, Series two of zero here, but outside of those two, there's no one else really close to two items. Like we, like Lilia's going for Zanya's next. Is not going directly into the uh, staff of ever flowing water. I believe is the correct name. Something like that. We're gonna start up the dragon here, and pretty much uncontested. Yeah, nothing. Really, to be done about that, the 5k gold lead is pretty standing. A lot of good vision here from the burger flip, but uh, obviously... Oh, Flash, things. they're trying to get on the cloud here, but no, they weren't able to get the sun. Exhaust is going to come out onto, but that is a massive three-man combo. Killer mm. Instinct coming in on the backside. Moonlight Visual is going to miss, but everyone is able to get out so far, as you do have a two-man seat coming in. Carl Sultan has rotated down, has had himself a force available, and it looks like everyone's just going to be able to disengage. Boy, you have pinks coming in onto that Baron. Kuma got blown up, man. Okay, here we go. King Silius. With some CC there. Jenkin Bottling, by the way, looking for that turret. Should probably get that, but... Oh, what? <laughs> Brings Carl back with him. Oh, Fierce Sparrow is just gonna die! Yikes. Yeah, you gotta you gotta be careful when you're in the blast coming back over there. You're not bringing somebody oh, with you. Oh, but Carlton has overstepped. It's gonna fall on the backside as the Gale Force is gonna come in from Michaela to secure the kill on the backside. Well, we did have Jenka down in the bottom lane, continuing this full push to secure the bot lane tier one. However, it should be traded back with the mid lane tier one coming in for the side of Burger Flip. Should be that mid turret is a little bit more important as well, and nobody takes a Baron yet. So overall, a, a little bit of a light there for um, for Burger Flip, but you know, they, they still lose their top laner, uh, and not uh, not great. But delayed the Baron for the time being, which is exactly what they were looking for. See if they can get any momentum after um, out of this one. But uh, Rudin's Hurricane completed there for Carbon is pretty huge. Collector on the flip side for Michaela. Yeah, Collector being finished up, Hurricane being finished up. Both these AD carries are now officially online. The amount of damage they're going to be able to unleash in team fights cannot be underestimated. Um, this Jack's going for, I believe, Sterex. Third item is going to be very powerful in team fights. Lich Bang coming in next week. Kali, Sterex completed for the Renekton. Still up 40 CS up in that top lane while. Michaela has fallen down a bit in CS, does have a whole bunch of kills, which kind of balances that out just a little bit here between the two of them. But Ramsey is down two levels in the jungle. It's a long way from com com completing that staff of Ember Flowing Water. Um, they are going to go in with a little tooling alibi, but the stopwatch is going to come in. We do have the immediate follow up with the also with the Nether Splash. Should be a, a dead Akali, but it is going to be traded back. Oh, with a kill on the Renzi. Carbon's trying to get the disengage. It's not going to be able to as Michaela goes godlike on the Kaiser. We're trying to get the kill down the Foofy Cat Ears. Foofy Cat Ears is going to flash out. We do have Carbs on. Is here. Does have a juicy ultimate Ooh. coming in, but he's got no follow up damage. He is all by himself on this rock. He is a rock between two other rocks, and those rocks are a lot bigger than he is. They really were, and it was a good unstoppable force, but not. <coughs> there's no follow up, and he's building full tank mouth fight, so it only does so much. Fierce Sparrow and the gang are going to run over the Baron. Start it up with the Death Timers. There won't be a contest for this. And in a minute 30, that next dragon comes up as well. And I think Company are pretty much running away with the game here now. It's a 7k gold lead where before it was 5. Fluffy Cat Ears. 
I would have really liked to have seen the glitter lance over the wall for the steel. That would have been hilarious. Um, but yeah, no way of telling that it was going down just then, so. Hey, you might as well just throw the skill shot out of, out of pure luck. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, the, uh, missed opportunities, but, oh well. Um. I do want to comment that almost everyone I see play Lilia in this skin is using that chroma for that skin. Oh, the the Ash one? Yeah, that's a yeah. really good chroma. I like that one for uh, Kindred as well, for that skin line. It's really yeah, cool. Yeah, I think almost every time I see this skin in professional play, they're playing this specific chroma. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really cool. I like it a lot. Um, uh, but right now... Company is looking okay. to set up Dragon. I'm never a big fan of this. Like, you have Baron for two and a half minutes. Look to push, look to get towers. Um, you can always fall back and kill Drake after. Like, the Drake's not going to be going anywhere. Yeah, they're not going to take it out from under you. Um, or at least not without, a, like, a Herculean effort. And that is uh, not really something you can count on. So, yeah, I, I would just push with the Baron. But, oh, well, they're going to lose their top turret for their efforts. Here. Yeah, it's 27 uh, minutes into the game, top of the tier one. Not the yeah. biggest of losses here. Hopefully they look for some push now. They seem to be rotating to the bot lane, maybe pushing through there. Um, might go for the dive on Kuma here. Oh, trade flashes are trying to get a range onto Basilius. So saying Night is going to come in to break the spell shield. And that is a, a dead void, void prince. Pretty good stuff. It's 45 now on the rift. Void mage? I don't know. He's just dead anyway here, as we do see the company pushing down. Bot lane looking to secure the bot lane. In here. They end here? Maybe. Uh, I don't think they can. Oh, nope. but that is a very nice three man combo coming in from Keep Facilia. So that is a nice follow up coming in from the Assault Force. So Kayla is going to get a bit wow. They have no AD carry. Boy vs. Girl trying to live as long as they can, but it's very, very low, and Carbon is just eviscerating everyone on the back side of the fierce bear trying to get the damage out but wow. he just can't he just can't do enough damage that is caitlin kogma on the on the weapons everyone do not fight caitlin kogma yep uh, you, you definitely can't fight it there but the moonstone coming in clutch with the staff of flowing water there too um oh they just completed the staff so they just got the staff so but the moonstone coming in clutch there, just keeping everybody alive right they tanked up a lot of damage which is pretty nuts. I think a little bit of a, a over commitment there from Michaela kind of went straight into the enemy backline. Maybe should have been a little bit more conservative. Um, we saw them flash back towards their team trying to get away from some of the damage, but uh, it was already too was late too by late. that point. Yeah. Um, also, just eating a lot of turret shots didn't really make a lot of sense. I mean, I understand you're fighting under their turret or you know near their turrets or whatever, so you're probably going to take some, but. Uh, at least juggling the turret aggro was not something that they seemed to care about. It was just kind of the carries always eating turret shots. Yeah, so we're at three items now complete on the Kaisa. Aphilios is still a ways away from completing his third item. Renekton to picking up the Tiamat. Not sure if I'm the biggest of fans um, of the Tiamat pickup, but to each his own, I'm not a Renekton player. Uh, Morel is coming in next for the Mount Zahar. Lulu has picked up the Ardent Sensor. Okay, so as a support main, there, there's something that I heard um, that a lot of high elo supports, not, they're all saying you should never build Ardent Sensor, that you should always build Staff of Everflowing Water. It's just better. Yeah, that was my um, assessment as well, is that you just, you just go for the staff, but yikes, Crawl Sultan, caught out of uh, position here. Yeah, but he's still a very tanky, we do have a massive little Timoli Lullaby coming in on the backside, Remy is going to go golden here, but a lot of damage is coming out. We do have the headbutt Ooh. coming and knocking Carbon what? out of the fight as that is too immediately gone. We do have Moonlight visible, this Vigil coming in, that is a lot of damage, but you are not tanky enough to face ink that much damage coming in. That is an ace coming in from the company. Company is going to take this series 2-0.
ending this game in about 31 minutes, and that was just a much cleaner game coming in from the company here in game number two. Yeah, the 10k gold lead to boot. Pretty commanding lead there. A um, little hiccup there on the back end. Maybe a little bit of weakness here from the company, but uh, other than that, it was uh, pretty pretty good win. Pretty solid first series of, uh, of the league this go-around. Yeah, very good performances coming in from the side of the company here. I, I think a lot of it I want to put on, like, game number one, I thought a lot of what Jenka did was really good. King Basilius had good engages in both games. And Fear versus Sparrow just found ways to get ganks off on champions you don't expect to get ganks off on with. Yeah, really, especially at that point in the game that they were making those ganks, right? I mean, got first blood for one thing, Beza Jax, which is pretty big deal, and really was able to snowball out of there. Um, did not do most damage in the game. That went down to Aphelios, uh, just doing all the AoE damage with Infernum. That's kind of what Aphelios does, but um, I'm sure Aphelios also got a lot of extra damage from that last fight when he basically, like, pentacled them, so... Um, but uh, pretty close nonetheless. Jack's coming out with 23,000 damage on that game. Um, it's pretty solid. Pretty solid performance. Uh, it's a little strange seeing uh, this team go from Jenka hard carrying to immediately uh, Fear Sparrow hard carrying. I really like seeing teams do this because it shows that they uh, have... They're not just like a one-trick pony, right? We're not just like, oh, everybody's here to support Jenka, and they carry us. It's like everybody on the team has carry potential, um, so they have lots of weapons. Yeah, they have lots of different tools they can bring to the table, though I do want to take a quick moment just to look at um, Burger Flip Platinum. Um, they had some good moments in both games, but I felt like... They didn't really have an idea of how to continue advantages when they got them. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a that's a pretty good point. Um, some of the advantages that they had were this top lane matchup. Kral Sultan was winning it super hard, um, and was you know constantly forcing Boy vs Girl out of lane. Um, and it was it was it was pretty good all the way up till Boy vs. Girl and Fear Sparrow went up there, dropped the Rift Herald, took that entire turret, uh, took the entire turret there, first turret, and that was it. Um, you know, that lane was over. So they, there was no way for them to force that advantage anymore. Um, the advantage as well in the mid lane, Kuma, despite having that like counter pick onto Akali, it never seemed that way, right? It always seemed like Akali is one step ahead. I mean, Akali did also get a lot of ganks. Like, there were multiple rooms from King Basilius. There were multiple ganks from Fear Sparrow. So it, it's not like it was just in a vacuum. But, like, the thing about Malzahar is he is even if he's quote-unquote used as a counterpick, he's never actually a counterpick, per se. He is a neutralizing mid laner that is basically, okay, you can't kill me 1v1, I can't kill you 1v1 unless one of us screws up, essentially. But um, I do want to say congratulations to uh, the company for starting off our Platinum Series with a convincing 2-0 victory. And I do have to ask, as I always ask, as is tradition here on our Platinum League class, I do have to ask you who you are giving for our Series MVP here tonight, Axe Man. That's easy, Primus. You give it to the jungler. It's Fear Sparrow. Come on, he carried the game on Jax here. He got first blood in the second game. Uh, and proved us all wrong about Poppy Jungle in Game 1. Um, there were some good performances there from Jenga and from... Uh, from Jenka, excuse me, and from Boy vs. Girl. But, I mean, if you're going to carry games on champions like Poppy and Jax, that, that stands out to me. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all for tuning in for our first stream here of the season here in our Platinum Division. I want to thank you all for tuning in tonight. And I do want to encourage you guys to come back here on Thursday for our two gold streams, both here on this channel and on ZGG2. Thank you all for tuning in once again. I am Primus. He is Axeman. Have a great night, everyone.
Thank you.